identify as doctor's designer online, it's kind of a riff because I'm a physician, but I don't actually have any formal training in design thinking. So I've been working with a collaborative uh, for the last couple of years called Health Design by Us. We are coming out of University of Michigan, Mott Hospital, School of Information, School of Art and Design. Um, and we've been doing design thinking or finding the intersection between design thinking and healthcare in that process. And um, I blog because I think it's sort of been uh, a way for me to reflect on the journey that I've been since I started thinking about this and started trying to apply the methods to the work that I do as a researcher, as a clinician, as an educator. And one of the conclusions that I've come up with is, is that um, design thinking is it's, it's a competency that you need as a clinician, right? Like you need to be able to have empathy for your patient in that clinical encounter and you need to be able to identify a patient identified problem, right? Not yours. And you need to think about creative solutions and come up with a prototype, right? Or maybe it's a prototype of care. And then if it doesn't work, you need to be able to iterate it, right? And change it um, and make it better to get the outcomes that you want. But I think the idea is that it's collaborative and I think uh, that's why I think design thinking is so important for healthcare providers, because at many levels, um, at the fundamental level of care, but also at meta levels, it will ultimately help us transform healthcare. Um, so the question I want to pose is, you know, who's the real expert in this picture, right? I am a pediatric endocrinologist. I work with children with type 1 diabetes, right? And so is it the guy on the left, right, in the laboratory, right, with the, with the white coat, right? Or is it this little girl? who has type 1, who's had type 1 since she was two years old, and knows the ins and outs of living with the disease 24-7, right? And um, I think that, you know, this conference really sort of drives that point home, but I think it's a, it's a point of view that doesn't necessarily exist in healthcare as we know it today. And, you know, I, 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 I've been kind of toying around with this idea because I've been thinking a lot about design and, um, you know, this is kind of the spectrum, right? You can start at the left and move over to the right. And at the very left-hand side, there's uh, design, what's that, right? No one in healthcare knows because most people don't come to conferences like this, right? Um, and then there's professional designers who know what we need but don't need to talk to us, right? Um, and then there's human-centered design, which is professional designers who are user-centered in their methods to make sure that they understand users' needs and behaviors, right? But I think what we've been trying to do is really push towards participatory design, so co-design between patients and healthcare providers, right? Knowing that we as physicians really don't totally understand the problems and the solutions. And then even meta design, which I think is an interesting concept. So it's sort of creating a system that assumes that patients are designers, that all users are designers. And I think the maker movement is a really um, important model of this, right? So the maker movement is this idea that it's a do-it-yourself technology movement, right? That espouses learning by doing and assumes that there's going to be peer-to-peer -peer learning amongst the community, right? And that's something that Susanna Fox is um, sort of pushing forth with her initiative at HHS, Invent Health, right? But um, I think the further along we are, right, in engaging with our patients as partners in care, the more successful we'll be. Um, so we've been doing all sorts of different kind of curricular collaborations um, with School of Information, School of Art and Design, having students learning entrepreneurship and app development and or art and design, actually building prototypes with patients from the hospital. Um, we've been doing all sorts of design at many levels, so thinking about systems design of learning health systems for type 1 diabetes, as well as getting at sort of emerging technologies and tools that our patients and families need day to day. And I did want to just put a shout out to diabetes emoticons. Um, so this is a concept that came out of one of the workshops that we did where we, where we gathered patients as sort of the experts and tried to understand and went through the design thinking process to understand the issues around a teenager with type 1 diabetes. And she was complaining about the fact that she was um, texting her mother and it was causing a lot of stress in the family, right? So we, we came up with this paper prototype, right? Eventually turned it into an app through the help of the Michigan hackers. But, you know, I think as a clinician, we have to realize that, you know, I would have, I would have made the other, like the additional logging app, you know, among the other hundreds or thousands of those that live in the app store that actually no one downloads and uses. But this was something that, that a, a patient identified problem and a patient created solution that really was, I think, um, much more transformative for thinking about how we develop uh, solutions for healthcare. Um, so we've also been doing a ton of maker workshops, participatory design workshops, hosting things like maker type fairs for um, health in particular. Um, and I just wanted to sort of give a plug because I'm probably one of the 
kind of, I'm one of the researchers in the room, so I do learning, uh, learning health systems, health services research, and emerging technologies in my research. And we've been working with the Night Scout community, which I think you guys are familiar with, right? So that's John Kostick, had a son with type 1 diabetes, has a son with type 1 diabetes, and couldn't get the numbers to go to the cloud um, for his glucose. So he basically hacked into the system and created his own do-it-yourself mobile technology solution and ended up developing interesting wearable prototypes, mobile desktop prototypes, shared that on social media. Lots of other family members saw this, other programmer parents who had kids with type 1. Um, and then they ended up opening up a Facebook group called CGM in the Cloud. And it has over 20,000 members now, and there's people actually all over the globe using this technology. So really important demonstration of the importance of um, social media and peer-to-peer -peer healthcare in developing transformative solutions for health. Um, so this is a cute little meme of CGM in the cloud, literally on the right, right? Um, but what we're trying to do is really work with the community now to create a collaborative innovation network, right? Um, so we want to we want to do this for uh, research in working with partners, looking working with patients as partners in research, um, and um, I. I think I just want to sort of share that we're working on this with patient partners from the Night Scout community. Dana Lewis is here, but she's downstairs, I think. Um, but we're really looking to um, work with patients from ideation all the way to conduct and dissemination and to really leverage the tools of mobile technology and social media that have existed in this community and to leverage the sort of pay it forward spirit that has come out of this community to jumpstart and accelerate uh, research discovery in type one. So thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.